Hello, I'm Glenn from GWiz MX, and today I'm going to show you how to install one of our frame riser kits. This is the kit, it comes complete with the exhaust, and we'll uh, start taking the bike apart and show you where all the bits go. First of all, we need to remove the, the seat. Radiator covers. Fuel pipe. Tank fixing. We need then to loosen the, the boot on the back of the carburetor. We need to remove the rear subframe. Fitting the nylon block and the tank sleeve, the tank sleeve pushes on the frame, followed by the nylon block, like so. The next step is to fit the radiator shroud brackets. These, are, these use the original bolt, and they fit on with the rivnut facing towards the inside of the bike. And at this stage, you only fit them on loose, because we have to line them up at a later stage. We do this both sides. The next components we're fit are the two clips, the black silicon hose and the aluminium tube. These go on the rear of the carburetor and make the extension to the original airbox rubber. The rubber and sleeve fit onto the carburetor like so. Ensure there's enough materials coming out to engage in the original airbox rubber and ensure that the, the rubber is fitted correctly on the carburetor and tighten the, tighten the clips. The next step is to put the bottom leg brackets on. The bottom leg brackets engage inside of the original subframe. You push them, push them firmly up Sometimes they're very tight and then you can place the bolt through um, and we need to use some Loctite with this to ensure it doesn't come undone. The next part is the subframe top mount. This is placed onto the frame and it's secured with the cap head bolts and a washer. These should have Loctite on them when final fitted, but we're going to just leave it loose for the moment while we do a setup on it. Now we need to install the subframe unit. We use original bolts that connect to the top mount. Once we have the top mount connected, we then need to bring the 
the legs down, whilst aligning the air cleaner rubber onto the new aluminium tube. Once the air cleaner rubber is installed, then we put the bottom leg bolts in. We're Sam everything just pinch tight at the moment so that we can check everything's settled and aligned as it should be. At this stage, we can now tighten these bolts here with Loctite. We can tighten the original bolts with Loctite. The bottom legs, we can tighten the air cleaner rubber, ensuring it isn't fouling anything and that you're happy with the seal and the fitment. The next job's on the fuel tank and it's the fuel tap as it is originally it hits the frame whenever you take it off and also with the lift kit on it will foul the frame so we need to we need to fit this item here which will resolve the problem and give it the correct position to stop it interfering with the frame but right, first of all we need to remove the original fuel tap which I held in with two self tappers There is a filter in the tank. I have to twist it to get it out. The new fuel tank adapter has a recess in it for an O-ring which comes in the kit. This goes towards the tank. And the unit fixes with the original self-tappers. Be careful when tightening them, not to over tighten them because they're only into plastic on the tank. Once that's installed, the original fuel tap can be fitted, ensuring the rubber is still in there. Face it forward. Once the filter is in, the tap's now held with the new six mil cap heads and they can be tightened. The original fuel tank mounting rubber has a bolt in it which has to be removed. We then fit it using a longer bolt to go through the nylon block. The bolt rubber fits in as, as original. Done up as you would on the original. We then fit the fuel pipe and the carburetor. Once that's fitted, we then line up the, the brackets we left loose and we put the new cap head and washer in. Into the rib nut. Once we have the bolt in the new radiator brackets, we do up the original 8mm behind that we left loose earlier um, once the alignment's been made and correct, and we do that both sides. We can now refix the seat unit using the original bolt. The next job we have to do is to remove the stock rubber seal and the rubber mount seal from the original pipe. We have to put this into our own pipe. Um, this pipe will fit the stock system but it will also fit on the systems like HGS etc uh, with no problem. So whatever pipe you're running it will fit. Then you can put your new silencer on. The, this silencer must be used because the, the original silencer will no longer be longer because the subframe unit is now up higher. Once you've completed the job, such as this, be, be sure to tighten all the nuts and bolts, double check everything, and periodically as you're using the machine, just give them a spanner check as you probably do on all the rest of the bike anyway. But just 
pay a bit of attention to it just for a few uh, for the first few times on it. The another good tip to do as well is if you're ever removing the rear subframe unit later, it's always best if you undo the the bolts from the original points, i.e. where the subframe meets the frame is the best point to undo rather than undoing it all in the aluminium work all the time. Um, it lasts a lot longer if you do it that way. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. And we have some other products for the 65 KTMs and the 85 Husqvarna and the 85 KTMs as well. Um, take a look at our shop www.gwiz.mx. It's all on the website. Thank you.